Howdy folks, I'm Scorn, the Crimson Renegade, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. Let's continue, let's continue. we can't go to the left, around the left side of the mountain here. It just won't take you anywhere, so let's go right and go up here. Take this path here and go into this first cave. We're going to do a random battle here. There's no point in me really doing anything and keep cuddling battles out, but I guess I can show off uh, the uh, level 3 magic. Here's, the, what, here's what Thundaga looks like. Like I said, after battle, we'll, we'll get the experience. We'll even get the experience screen. Let's go in here. And we get a little um, exposition from uh, the tour guide. Mysteriously colored cave. Ah, okay. Follow it around to the right. Another random battle here. What, um, what tier 3 magic is he going to use this time? Lay flat and I'm dead. That did exactly 140 damage to me. He uses the Zaga, and what ice looks like. The Sephiroth's going to leave me lying there, of course. Now they go into mandatory, uh, inventory, I'm still dead. But I can't res myself because I don't have access to the items. Now, I don't think I can actually use... Can I actually use the skills? Oh, why not? I can. <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I guess I should have tried full life to show what that was all about. But as you can see, you've got full... What full life does, full life does exactly what you think it does. It, re it revives the money and restores them to full HP. I guess I should have shown that off, but eh, whatever. <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. That was the first time I really could ever actually try. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I'm yawning. <clears throat> What's this shiny little thing? A Mako fountain. I suppose that's true. What we're looking at here is the you talk when you talk about materia is that shiny crystal you see in the middle of that little tree looking thing. So that's how you can use magic. You're using the knowledge of the ancients. I don't know why they found that funny. Oh, that guy, huh? You know that name. Inexperienced, right? Even Sephiroth calls him inexperienced. Right now we're auto walking through another part of the uh, mountain. Approaching the reactor. Right, you can control the cloud. I don't know. I don't know why they stopped it here. Why they went ahead, didn't just go ahead and push the two steps forward it takes to go up the ladder and go to the next go to the next scene. But whatever. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, what could a 16-year-old girl really tell anybody, but whatever. Rules are rules, I suppose. <laughs> Just like a teenage girl to get bitchy. Alright. Let's take this odd way around here. Over to these chains and down. And follow Sephiroth. And this little place we go. This looks familiar. Those gears look quite familiar to me. Let's see. We go up the stairs here. Yeah. And we talk to Sephiroth. It says Genova at the top. And it says Genova in that giant pipe on the left. Sephiroth goes over to the right. We go down here. Interact with the uh, this thing right where Sephiroth was standing. And we go talk to Sephiroth from up here. There we go. Let's see what. What did he do? When it's working correctly, okay. All right, it becomes material because we just discovered, we just uh, we just learned that normally put something else in there. All right, now despite what Sephiroth said, you can't just go over here and look at the look at it yourself. You actually have to talk to Sephiroth again because apparently we can't do anything without his orders. Look through the window. Now he jumps up there and takes a look. What's inside there? Medusa. Ah. So basically they put uh, clouds in the same... Are, are those those creatures that those used to be humans through the same uh, process as cloud but just they're exposed to a much higher level of, uh, of makeup has he got a headache all of a sudden Whoa, -ho, watch out. He's gone wild with his, his longsword. Well, obviously not, because you you look normal. Surely not. I mean, you can't be the same as all those monsters, because those things look like Medusa. You actually just have long silver hair. They were human. That guy, so... You expose a human to that much makeup and it turns him into a giant, into a hideous Medusa ugly creature. Again, Sephiroth does not look like that. This is another another FMV that came that that was included in the trailer. You see, he hasn't completed his uh, transformation yet. I'm not going to control the dialogue here. the industrial secrets that I guess they do want Tifa to see. 
that's one thing I do like is how they uh, take a little time to explain the um, they they put a little, they get a little exposition on how the monsters that you're fighting throughout the game appear, and these the monsters that you're fighting are the monsters that were created by Sef- by uh, Shinra and their uh, their Mako reactors. All right, we can use our, this opportunity to uh, do a save here, so I'm going to go ahead and save real quick and be right back. All right, back from the save. Now we can move on. Glad they put the save there. That way, in case you anything goes wrong with the with the game, or if you need to stop for whatever reason, you have to do all that entire part over again. The biggest building in Nibelheim, the Shinra Mansion, as I mentioned in the last episode. It's up to me to go find him. Alright, we're in control of Cloud here. And luckily, we don't have to encounter the enemies that are normally in this, uh, in this mansion. Otherwise, it would be a very, very bad thing, especially considering I'm still level 1. Alright, let's see if we can find Sephiroth. Where could he be in this giant place? Well, I could do some exploring if I wanted to, but there's really no point. There's no items or anything here to get. So, let's just go to right straight to where he is. Up the stairs here. Up these stairs and to the right. Talk to the soldier here. So I'm going to this room, huh? Well, let's see. This little uh, hole in the wall looks suspicious. It's a door! It leads to a very long spiral staircase. What is it with Final Fantasy games and spiral staircases like this? You see this in Final Fantasy X also. Run down to this cave here. Open this door here. And there he is. We found him. Apparently, dead organism was found in a 2,000-year-old geological stratum. Ah, so they found G- Genova in a 2,000-year-old, like, what? Like, oh, I don't know exactly what the... Like a geological cave or something? Genova confirmed to be an ancient. I guess if it was 2,000 years old, I guess it makes sense. Genova project approved and make a reactor one approved for use. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that little that brief fix. I had uh, Zerify had an issue with her, uh, her capture box for a minute, so I had to help her fix it. You make it so easy. <laughs> All right, X month, X day uh, project, a uh, general project approved for use of make a reactor one approved for use. And when were they built make a reactor one? Professor Gast, huh? We heard about that name in the uh, library. Let's talk to Sephiroth. Hey, what's up? Oh. Wants me to leave him alone. Alright, I guess all we can do is just leave. There's nothing else we can do. Didn't come out of the Shinra Mansion, huh? Text is uh, again uh, auto uh, automatically going, so I don't have control here. Wow, he can do a lot of reading.
Ooh, scary music. And he crawls off the end of the bed. Why can't he just roll off the side like a normal person? Anyway. We, would, we need to return to where we uh, saw Sephiroth. That's the only thing we have to do. Sephiroth seems different, huh? Right, well, let's go see him. He's still down here at the bottom of this spiral staircase. So we're gonna work our way around. All the way around. There we go. This my turn. Down the cave. Through here. And into here. Oh, he's laughing. Maybe he found something funny. Let's hope so, right? Well, at least he neatly put all the books back on the shelf. It's me. What? What? Traitor? Okay. Hmm. All right. Oh, that sounds bad. Oh. Uh-huh. So the Cetra sacrificed themselves to save the planet and those that were not part of the Ancients, who were apparently Cloud's ancestors, as he puts it, um, survived. Obviously we don't, otherwise we would have asked the question. Right, we, we heard you say that. produce people with the power of the ancients? Ah, well, you're pretty damn strong, dude. Are the ancients as strong as you? Oh, so that's who Gast was. turned up. We have to pursue him, find out what he's doing. Let's go see, he wants to go see his mother, huh? Clearly he's talking about Genova, so he's going to the uh, reactor. So, that's where we need to go. Back up the spiral staircase this time. Sephiroth's fast, but he's already gotten out the door. Soldier's gone. This will be a long walk. We'll better deal with any enemies. Uh, holy shit, what happened to this town? Um, I suppose. I gotta go over here to this house here, which is our house. I see now remember he said a few days later she died. Trigger referring to his mother. So is this how she died? Oh no, he's killing people. Of course, one of the most epic uh, stairs of any video game. You know, I always thought Orin was badass, but I'm sorry, Sephiroth, I think, outdoes him. He just walked through flames unflinching.
Meanwhile, back at the reactor... Luckily, we don't have to actually walk to the reactor. But once we're here, we do have to walk manually. Walk up here, take the chains down. Pretty much we need to go back to the Genova room where we uh, where we saw Gen Zephyroth first have his breakdown. And, uh-oh. Hey, this looks familiar. Where have we seen this before? Flashback to episode, what, three, four? <laughs> All right, let's follow Tifa. Well, it looks like she can wield the sword pretty well. I mean, remember we said that uh, so only Sephiroth could wield that sword. She's got a pretty good hold on it. She's even carrying it with one hand. That's pretty good. Oh, and then that happened. And then that happened. Ass. Ass. Head. Ow. And in he goes. And now we're back in control of Cloud. Let's check on Tifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that now. You're hurt. Now we need to go after Sephiroth. If you would like to talk to her, she would just repeat what the line she said when we picked her up. Or when Cloud picked her up. So this is what the Genova room, huh? Epic music kicks on again. Mm hmm. Edifice complex, anybody? Oh, really? Another awesome FMV, here, this time with text. And whatever that machine is, he just rips it out. That machine obviously was not Genova. That, however, is, and looks very familiar, very similar to what we saw in Midgar. On top of the Oedipus Complex, a God Complex. Oh boy. Alright, looks like we're about to battle. A level 1 versus level 50. David versus Goliath kind of thing, I'm sure. But here we go. All right, let's see how this is going to go. I've got no materia. He's got a bunch of level, level uh, mastered materia. Let's see what happens here as the screen goes really white. And we're back in uh, calm. And that's the end of the story. Well, that was anticlimactic. You don't remember. 
you don't remember what happened when you fought the strongest guy ever made out of out, out of soldier, who was forty nine levels above you with a bunch of material that you'll probably won't see for another sixteen episodes, or twenty episodes or more, and you don't remember. Convenience, an RPG character with amnesia. We won't see this in other Final Fantasy games. Mm-hmm. Ah, of course not. That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense. Oh, so Sephiroth showed up at the uh, uh, at the Shinra headquarters and took Genova from the uh, from the science building or from the science center. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that wasn't a stab. That was a slash, which surprisingly didn't cut your body in half. What a fascinating story, Red says. <laughs> All right, and that wraps up that. We are done with the. We now understand the history and the the crisis of the planet, as uh, Cloud said back at the seventieth uh, floor of the Shinra building. Let's catch up to our crew here. We have the PHS. What the PHS does it allows us to change characters at will at save points or on the world map as it says right there all right so from this point on we're pretty much free to do whatever we want to do as you can see now the entire menu bar is filled we have access to the phs which again is only available at save points or on the world map and from there you can exchange characters out at will um uh you can only change out characters that uh, are Optional optional party members. There are points in the game where you cannot change certain party members for storyline reasons, and of course, Cloud can never be changed out. All right, so let's go. Ahead. All of our characters are already set up and everything. Our materia is already set up with these three, so I'm not going to bother changing anything. We're happy as is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run out here, so I got a little bit of time in this episode before we wrap it up. Let's go ahead and do the shopping that I said I was going to do a couple episodes back. Let's go in this building here and see what's here. Talk to this guy that won't turn around and talk to us. This is the item store. Alright, he's got a few good things here. He's got hypers and tranquilizers. I'm out of tranquilizers and hypers. I've got three tranquilizers. I'm out of hypers. I'll buy two more tranquilizers. It'll give me five. And I'm going to go ahead and buy ten hypers. Then I'll go ahead and buy... Have, get 10 hype, get uh, 10 tranquilizers as well. I got plenty of money for that. And then I don't care about those. I got 11 Phoenix Downs. I got plenty of potions. Um, I got 4 tenths. Let's go ahead and up that to 10 tenths. How much did that take? Ooh, that's late. 5,000. Let's not do that. Uh, let's do, let's just do 1 tenth. It'll give us 5 total tenths. Alright. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and back out here. I know I still got some stuff I can sell. I'm not worried about that right now. Let's go into this double shop here. This is the materia store. Okay, this is what I want to look at. Earth, poison, steel, sense, and heal. Okay, we've got some uh, some materia here that we haven't seen before. Uh, earth materia is obviously earth magic. It, ca it uh, casts earth elemental magic. Um, I'll get it, but I probably won't use it very often. Um, do I even want to bother getting it? No, nah. no, nah, I'm not going to bother getting it. What it does is it casts Quake and its um, uh, 
tier two and tier three counterparts like I think like Quakera and Quake Arga or something. I don't really know exactly what it's called. And with using the uh, mod here, um, but uh, Earth uh, casts Earth type magic, and the problem, well, the reason I don't like Earth type magic is air uh, flying enemies are completely immune because obviously it affects Earth. It creates an earthquake, and flying enemies don't aren't affected by that. So I don't really see the point of having it. Uh, here's another poison materia. I might get another one. I might, I might go ahead and get two, just so I have two poison materials. I don't see the need to have three. I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, I do. I am going to get two steel materials. That way, all three characters have access to the steel command. That way, whenever I'm doing stealing, I can just spam the steel command until I get the items that I'm looking for. And we're getting pretty close to doing some more stealing pretty soon. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and get two more steels here. I am not going to get sense. Uh, and this is. And then we get the heal magic here. This. Uh, um, this materia is different from, say, the Cure materia. This, uh, or the Restore materia, rather, whereas Restore restores your HP through the Cure abilities. Cure, Cura, Curaga, and, re and Regeneration, Regen. Heal, um, essentially removes status ailments. It starts, I think it starts with, uh, Poisona, or maybe Asuna, and as you level it up, gets other abilities that cure status ailments. I'm not going to get it, because I have no need for it. Like I said, status ailments, most of them are cured after battles. And if I really need to worry about it that badly, I'll probably have curative items that I can use that would be much quicker and wouldn't cost me any MP. Now, if you're trying to go for the uh, magic, uh, um, uh, master magic uh, materia that I mentioned a few episodes back, you'll definitely want to go ahead and buy Earth and Heal here and start trying to max them out. Now, if you're not trying to go for the master materia, which I'm not, I'm not going to bother with it. So, with, I got the two steel materias. I'll go ahead and back up. I'm going to go and do some selling here. Anything I want to get rid of. Um, I don't need the star pendant, so I'll get rid of both of those. That's an extra 4,000 gil. That's nice. Uh, don't need these five mithril armlets because we've got better armor. Uh, Titan Bangle, I think, is the best armor we have right now. So we'll hang on to that. I don't care about those four slots. So I'll get rid of that. Um... I want to hang on to this atomic scissors, and next time I, when I step, what I probably what I do when I step out of calm, I'll show off the PHS, bring uh, Barrett into the party, equip these atomic scissors, that way you can see what it looks like when I use the PHS. Um, Mega lectures, unfortunately, can't be sold for anything, even though they're very, very, very good. Uh, Ten hypers, guard sources. I'm, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother using sources for a while because I don't really need them, uh, because I don't really know what the best plan of action is for those things, honestly, because like I said, they only boost whatever stat they're designed for by one point, and in the long run, that's really, really negligible. So, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to sell the guard sources because they're only worth one, oh, they're worth 250 gil. Oh, they're only worth one gil. So, I might have been selling them after all, but if I don't, then I might uh, use, them on, use them somehow. Alright, and that's it. So, let's go ahead and just back out here. Materia, nothing here I really know about do anything with. I'm going to go ahead and sell this one sense material because, again, I'm not going to use sense. It's only 30 AP, but at least it gets it out of my inventory. Alright, let's go ahead and check out my material slots here. He already has steel. Yes, he does. So I'll put steel here on red and then steel on Eris if I can find a place to... Okay, I'll replace ice because I'm not going to be using ice. But I have a spare slot in reds at the category for ice, so I'll go ahead and put that ice material there. Alright. Again, I'm not using ice, I'm just trying to use it and build it up, and eventually I'm probably going to sell it for uh, for AP. So, especially if I master it, I'm definitely going to sell it then. Because, again, I'm not really going to use ice magic. There's not a lot of enemies that uh, that are susceptible to it. Okay. Let's go over here and talk to this, sto this uh, store over here. It's a weapons store. Let's check it out. Alright, we can get a Mithril Saber. These, this is the first time, this is the first place we can actually get a replacement weapon for Cloud. But as you can see, the Hard Edge, which we stole from the Soldier Thirds at the uh, Shinra Tower, the Shinra Headquarters, is still better than the Mithril Saber. So that just shows you how far ahead, that the steel, how good the Steel Command is, that you can steal items that are so much far ahead than the current area you're in. The same is true for the cannonball here. I don't have the atomic scissors equipped, but if I did, they would be much better than this cannonball. Now, I can get this mithril claw here for Tifa, but in just a little bit, I'm about to steal a weapon for her that will be even better, so I'm not going to bother buying this. 
the full metal staff here. Here's the next weapon we could buy for Eris. But as you can see, the striking staff that we stole from the Elagor back in the train graveyard in Midgar is obviously better than this full metal staff. So again, just shows you how good the Steel Command is. You can steal weapons that are actually much more advanced than anything you could buy. So it's very, very nice. And then one more proof of that is those Titan Bengals that, uh, that I stole, or Carbon Bengals rather, that I stole from the Moth, uh, sla moth Slasher in uh, the Shinra head headquarters is better than the Mithril Armlet by a lot. Okay, so nothing really we can buy or use there, so we'll just go ahead and uh, boogie on out of here. And we are done with uh, Calm, so we'll head on out of Calm. I want to show off uh, how to use the PHS real fast. Step out of column here. Pull up our menu here. Go to PHS, which again is only available at, let's say, at save points or on the world map. Go to PHS, and you can only replace any character that isn't Cloud or any characters that aren't required by storyline to stay in, which we haven't encountered that kind of thing yet. So temporarily, I'm going to switch Eris out from Barrett. Go in here to equip. Switch that uh, assault gun for the atomic scissors. 32 attack power. So that's even better. That's, like I said, that was way better than the cannonball that was available back in the uh, back at Calm just there. Also, there is a downside to the atomic scissors, whereas the Gatling gun and the assault gun are long-range weapons. The atomic scissors are not, so it does uh, take away Barrett's ability to attack from long range. He will be limited to melee range attacks. We'll let him attack like uh, Cloud and Tifa. Um, but there's a way we can get around that, and I'm, I'll show that off in, uh, probably in the next episode, or at least explain it to you. So let's go ahead and equip the atomic scissors. I'm not going to bother putting any, any uh, material on him, because I'm not going to keep him in my party right now. I just want to show how the PHS works. Change Barrett for Eris. And now that we're out here, we're going to continue to the southeast from this, from where we are. And you can see this map in the lower right-hand corner. You can kind of see these little white dots. I mean, it's kind of a little hard to see, maybe. But we're going to head to the southeast, toward that white dot near the far eastern end of that uh, continent that we're on, in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. I'm Score, the Crimson Renegade. I'll see you later.